Levy shoots his hands up in celebration. A fat grin appears on his face. He's just destroyed a chess cheater. Moments later, the player is banned from chess.com for life. But how did we get here? Imagine studying chess your whole life just to be crushed by a 10-year-old using stockfish. Chess cheaters destroy grandmasters all the time. How is it possible to beat an engine that knows every best move? In our first match, Eric Hansen is paired against a suspicious 2600 from Norway. The Norwegian shoots their pawn out to c4. Eric swiftly replies with pawn to e5. The game quickly transposes to the English opening. They are playing in the Arena Kings tournament for a $12,600 prize. Both players casually develop their pieces. Neither side is being confrontational and launching an early attack. Eric looks relaxed, if only he knew what was coming. They both rapidly trade pieces until we are left with a knight for Eric and bishop for his opponent. Pieces are slowly shuffled around until we have this position. The match is about to get spicy. Eric begins to sense something isn't right. His opposition is playing incredibly strange moves. They play really weird. He's trying to hang everything, clearly. After playing pawn to b5, counterattacking the queen, Eric plays knight to d5. This mobilizes the knight, allowing it to control more squares on the board. He now has a slightly winning position. His opponent slides the bishop out of danger. Hansen moves his queen to e6, defending the previously unprotected pawn. He now has control of the center of the board and seems to be cruising to victory. But his opponent is about to play a deadly move that changes everything. After some more quick piece shuffling, the Norwegian plays bishop to f6. This is a costly mistake as after Eric plays rook to e8, the bishop is pinned to the queen. If moved, the queen would be captured instantly. Then the lethal move is played. Eric's opponent shoots his rook to the other side of the board. This is an incredible move as it pins the rook to the king, protecting the vulnerable bishop from being captured. Hansen shakes his head in disgust. After they trade and he swings his queen to d7, the position is now equal. It's almost as if his opponent briefly turned on Stockfish. Eric's clock is running low. Both players blitz out moves trying to regain an advantage. Then the unthinkable happens. Eric's opponent repeats queen moves back and forth until the game is drawn. At this point, Hansen looks steaming and visibly angry. He immediately checks his opponent's chess.com profile, only to discover that it was created the same day. The account was just made fucking today. Eric begins to have a full-blown meltdown. There are so many suspicious fuckers in this tournament. Stop letting brand new accounts play this fucking tournament. Can you really blame him? After that weird turn of events, Hansen managed to draw. He is a strong grandmaster rated 2870. How could a weaker player possibly destroy a cheater? Things are about to get intense. And this is how I managed to beat the cheater. The match starts with the queen's gambit declined opening. Both players calmly develop their pieces. The bishops are swiftly traded off, and both sides castle their kings to safety. The cheater plays knight to h4, a bizarre move as knights can attack less squares when placed on the edge of the board. Wow, knight h4. Levy is already highly suspicious of his unknown 2100 rated opponent. He plonks his knight on e4, and it is swiftly traded off. So far, his opponent has played flawlessly. How does Levy stand a chance? The shuffle mania takes place, with both sides endlessly moving their pieces back and forth. Levy knows that it is virtually impossible to beat his opponent on the board. Maybe his strategy doesn't involve winning on the board. The cheater has now burned half of their time with five minutes left on the clock. The position looks stable. How will the cheater crush Levy before the clock hits zero? His opponent launches their knight to e5. This looks deadly as the knight covers a large amount of territory on the board. The cheater begins to storm their pawns down the right side of the board. Levy looks nervous. He knows that if the position is broken open, he will be annihilated. However, with under two minutes on the clock, the cheater is running out of time. The pawns are traded, leaving Levy with a weak pawn on c4. His opponent immediately strikes the weakness, adding pressure with rook to b6. He has 40 seconds left on the clock. 40 seconds for white, still absolutely no progress has been made. Rosman replies, threatening checkmate on the back rank. After it is defended, Levy points an imaginary middle finger at the cheater by sacrificing his queen. He knows that with only 15 seconds left, his opponent has no chance. They are just too slow. 10 seconds, 5 seconds, bang. The cheater runs out of time, giving Levy the win. He throws his hands up in the air. That was for all the grandmasters whose hopes and dreams have been crushed by Stockfish.